Good evening, Nick the Porsche here. Uh, how y'all doing? Um, today I want to make a little quick video for y'all. Um, I'm going to be working on the truck saw, the Pioneer P42 box of parts saw that I saved the uh, cylinder on through a uh, oil stop piston in. Um, like I said, compression button out, as y'all saw in another video. It's got no compression run. Pressure button in, I mean, it's got nothing. It still runs pretty good, as y'all saw in that video, or uh, if you haven't seen, go try to check it out. Um, this all stays in the back of my truck. I mean, you see just how nasty this all stays. Always cranks up, always fires. In that video, I alluded to that it has a Warbro uh, w WJ RWJ4 off like a Husqvarna Extort uh, carb on it. Uh, I want to show y'all what it was involved in swapping that over. Um, I'll actually be taking that saw off. Alright, that carb off this saw. I'm saving it for another project. Uh, this one does have stop port and I didn't touch the ports on it yet. I uh, just wanted to see if I could even get it to run after seeing what shape the uh, cylinder is in when I got it. Um, so I will be pulling that off and I'll be putting the stock Walbur SDC uh, back on it. I uh, just rebuilt it. The only re reason I swapped it over, the RWJ4 extort carb on it was honestly just proof of concept. Um, so now I want to save it for that farm saw I may be porting, or I will be porting, sorry. It will get ported. Or I may throw it on... Uh, one of my Macs, actually I'll probably throw a few on some of my Macs and the uh, Pioneer P50. We will be opening up that P50 coming here soon. Um, may do a little transfer work on it. And then uh, it's got a uh, semi-fix high jet on it. And I'd like to be fully adjustable, so it's going to get the 19 millimeter Venturi extort carb on it. But... Here it is. Let's get started. Actually, I haven't taken the air cover off this saw in probably six months. So, I'll be curious to see how it looks. Ugh. Pretty dirty. Pretty dirty, I'd say. Mm, 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 mm. But, honestly, not too bad. I'll clean that off. As far as sealing, it does a fairly good job. It's got a little bit of little bit of dust and stuff that just fell off fell, fell off in it but now we'll bring y'all in closer get loosen this clamp up and I'll show you what was uh, all involved in swapping this uh, extort carb over first and foremost thing you may be thinking of is the extort doesn't it have an impulse line well you'll be correct the extort does have an impulse line I'll show you how I got around that This boot can be a little bit get tough, tough to get off this off. There we go. There we go. So, I'll bring y'all, pull y'all off the stand real quick, and I'll bring y'all in here. So, here is the RWJ4, a, aka Extort Carb. Um, you can see I'm running the Tigon fuel line on it. Here, that may give us a little bit better light. Um, this was actually a, um, Chinese, uh, clone carb, but, sorry, that's the old, uh, kill wire that doesn't work. I actually gotta fix that on this saw. I have to kill it with a choke, but I'll show you, you see, it's got a top plate, uh, pump side that does not have impulse in it. Well, what I did, this is a Walboro WJ off of what would be like a 390, 394. And you see, it does have a uh, impulse in the uh, pump side. Uh, external, external impulse top plate on it. But if you turn it back around, 
it's drilled for internal. You can probably see where I'm going here and how I got this carb to be internal. But I'm gonna set y'all back up while I pull it off and then I'll show you a little bit more on that carb. Just want to get a little bit better for y'all. Yeah, we'll go ahead and pull that back off. Usually use that just for porting. Um, kind of made this video. Uh, I watch a bunch of different uh, saw bitter channels on YouTube. I watch watch Iron Horse chainsaws. I watch Ten Man saws. Um, Want to give a shout out to Nothing But Chainsaws. Have a had a brief uh, brief conversation with him today. Really nice guy. Got some really good content on his uh, channel. Y'all should go check it out. Um, he does a lot of work on multiple different brands and does very quality work and very quality uh, film work. Much better than me, I gotta say. Uh, but he's a pleasure to watch. And there's probably more that I'm forgetting, but. Uh, I will, uh, if I can remember them later, I'll give them a shout out as well. Finish pulling these bolts off. The reason this saw is stock is, like I said, because of the, uh, shape of the cylinder when I got it. Honestly, I wasn't sure if it was even going to run. That uh, aluminum transfer had some pretty deep gouging. Heck, I may even still have the piston. I'll show y'all the piston if I still have it. It was uh, it was pretty gnarly. But let's get that. There we go. Next, we will pull off. This one was a little tricky. Pull off the choke. Come on, there we go. Dry rod pretty well falls off because of the way I drilled the uh, mount for it. Looks like gasket's still on here. Save that guy for another build. You'll you'll find that I I make most of my own gaskets and or reuse a bunch of gaskets. Uh, mainly because when I put this all together, I use. Uh, just your typical axle grease on the gaskets. It keeps them nice and pliable, helps with sealing, and uh, you can you reuse gaskets multiple times because they come off easy. So, back to this clone RWJ4 carb. Yes, I stole a genuine Walbur top light off that other carb that I showed y'all. I will be swapping them back over. So, to get this to work on a farm saw, your factory, uh, double check on this. Yeah. You can see here, there's a couple different holes drilled. I tried different mounting options. Honestly, the one that's worked the best on Pioneer chainsaws is the factory extort uh, throttle linkage hole. It does work, gets full throw. So that's pretty easy. Choke side. I've noticed on the uh, 390 carb, you're not able to do this, but on this carb you are. On the 390 carb, um, it won't allow you to pull back on it, but it seems that these Chinese extort carbs, you can actually pull back on the choke and it works exactly like the factory Pioneer STC carb. Just pull back, pull back, choke it, this uh, high idle cam, I haven't figured out a way to make it work, but it's not in the way. It doesn't really cause any issues. But, and then I'll show y'all. I guess I could, yeah, I'll pull it apart. I'll pull the top plate off. Um, Give me one second. I, didn't, I, I forgot. This carb uh, uses a... Uh, uses uh, Phillips head screws on the top plate. Let me find my Phillips head screwdriver real quick.
seem to have misplaced my Phillips head, but found one that'll work. Pull this top plate off real quick and I'll give y'all a peek inside of how I drilled this, uh, turn this carb from an external impulse to an internal uh, impulse passageway. Um, do the same thing for uh, if you want to mount these carbs on like your older 2 Series Husqvarna, anything that has an internal passageway like a your typical Barbaro SDC or Tillotson HS, all these will, this mod you can do to any external carb that I've come across and turn it internal. All you'd have to do is kind of like you saw when I did this one, you can either put a little piece of Tigon fuel line on the external impulse and plug it. Or what I will end up doing with this is cutting this elbow off, uh, pinching it, sh pinching it shut, and uh, coating the top and solder to block off that passageway. Sorry, I'm still really bad at camera angles and showing y'all guys stuff. Still smells good. Let's try and get this. There we go. Okay. So, about every car I've come across, this one actually wasn't dimpled for the impulse. But what you can do, we find that gasket again. This is what I did. So you can line up your gasket, take two bolts, line up your gasket, put your two bolts in right here. Um, if you want to, you can put nuts on the back side, hold it steady. And uh, I use a center punch and dimple that hole. Then all you do is pull your gasket off, start with a small drill bit, and drill as straight as you can. And when you drill in, you're going to hit, there is a channel that meets up with this hole right here. And that's where you get your impulse from, is this hole right here. Hope y'all can see that pretty well. So, see how that lines up right there? Right there to right there. You can see it right there. And that's how you get your internal impulse. And like I said, once you do that, go that route, you need to uh, close up, stop, uh, block off the external impulse or it it won't pull fuel essentially is what's going to boil it down to um i'll swap i'll finish swapping that over off camera all right so here's the old carb that originally came on this saw like i said being that this was a p42 hp western um it came with stock with a Walbro stc um it is fully adjustable no fixed hide jet. Uh, if I remember right, 18.5 millimeter Venturi. Um, so it's more than plenty for this saw, especially being stock. So that's why I'm probably just going to swap it back on. Um, I may end up swapping back the fuel line. The reason it's running this line is because it's on that, uh, the extort carb, the nipple, it's much smaller. Then on your STCs, I don't know if y'all be able to see that. Yeah, your fuel nipple is much smaller than your typical STC. I'll show you right here. See how much bigger that is. Um, honestly, they still flip both flow more than plenty for your typical anything up to, I'd say probably 100 cc. They flow more than enough. Um, another mod I did do to this RWJ4 carb is when you get it, um, I don't know if the factory ones are like this. I wasn't willing to pay that kind of money for these carbs. These aren't work saws. They're more fun play firewood saws. Um, it'll have a divider in here, a black divider because of the way the, uh, induction system is on the 372 x shorts they have uh the p 
fuel is divided from the air, so there will be a black divider straight across. What I ended up doing is taking um, a player of uh, thin, no thin needle uh, needle nose pliers and breaking it up and pulling it out, so that way there's full the fuel and air will mix together before going down the uh, reeds, and it I really I haven't found any problems with it. Carbs actually fairly clean. For as dirty as this saw typically stays. So, putting this one, the old SDC back on, is pretty, pretty routine. I mean, I'll show y'all, but there's nothing really to it. To hook up your throttle first, if I remember right, this top hole. Another thing on the uh, the X Torque carb is come on now. This is one thing I did have an issue with trying to get this off last time. There we go. Is the choke for because the Husqvarna's choke rod is much larger. This one um, with the Pioneers, I found it. You'll still have plenty of travel with your choke. Um, it will be a little sloppy in here, but I mean, it doesn't really harm the functionality of the choke. So, I mean, I guess you could make a little insert to put in here or weld it up and drill the hole smaller. I didn't see a need for it. All right, so that's back on. We'll put the, I'm not even sure what Pioneer calls this. All it does is connect to that uh, intake boot. She wasn't she getting much down in her. And lastly, I'll connect the fuel line because with how, and that's one thing, if you do decide to do a 372 x torque carb on these or any that any of the wall bros that have a down facing, um, fuel inlet, you will have to make the, uh, the uh, fuel line longer just because of the nature that it is uh, facing downward. of this flat bait it's just a little bit big and it catches the side of this uh it's not an intake block on these farm saws i'm not sure what they call it all it does is i guess you it would be like an elbow on a husqvarna there we go mount it back up Throttle works, choke works. Pull my fuel line back on. See, it'll fit over there. Maybe a little touch long, but it ain't nothing gonna ain't gonna cause no harm. Now let's see if it'll pull pull fuel. take back on I said I'm not in love with these pioneer intake uh, systems they had on there air, air filtration more or less sorry because um, all it is is relying on the seal between here and this rubber gasket it does let some dirt some dust in um, I'm not overly concerned with this saw because of the shape that the cylinder was in, uh, was in on it. That's why it does stay in the back of my truck. I had a, 
Husqvarna 61 with a uh, 162 that's Varna 162 piston and cylinder on it uh, I chose that because it has closed ports um, but I believe we had a rod bearing going out on it and uh, the piston is smacking the top of the cylinder so that's when this one I decided this one was gonna be my truck saw for a while typically I'll swap them out every six eight months just so some of them get some run time on them, um, try to stay away from a max. I just like to run them on the weekends, crank them up, keep them running, but I don't want them to have to sit in the back of the truck and get as dirty as these do every day. Um, besides that one Pro 55 that kept in the back of the truck for probably two years, but that one, you don't have to use the decomp on. It's probably got 120 pounds of compression. I haven't put a gauge on it. Um, usually started right up, and I wasn't too concerned if that one uh, got damaged or not because that one's in much better shape. Um, let's see if I have that piston real quick. Oh, here it is. That's in the box over here. So, here. That's the piston that came in that saw. And yeah, those are still the rings in it. Can't get the rings out. They've got aluminum. I'm not sure if you would chalk that down to straight gassing or running really lean because of air leak or improper tuning. But yep, yeah, that'll tell you about what shape this cylinder was in. It does have some deep gouges in it, and like I said, there was no compression because you see the how the rings are in it. I mean, you can't move the rings. The piston has aluminum pressed up into the ring lands. But, hope y'all enjoyed this video. Um, like I said, uh, after watching uh, Tin Man's video today about their troubles with external uh, impulse on the Husqvarna's, Want to show a way that I found. Um, I'm not the first one to find it. Um, I think I read it somewhere online that you could do this, and I just tried it, and it works. So, hope y'all enjoyed the video. Hope y'all learned something uh, new. Help y'all on y'all's builds, and uh, I'll see y'all later. Hope y'all have a great week. Thank y'all.